Hello everyone, welcome to another lecture video from Think Surgery. Today we are going to talk about an important topic which is Xanthogranulomatous Pyelonephritis. Xanthogranulomatous Pyelonephritis is a chronic severe infection of the kidney. It is a rare condition and it is thought to arise secondary to an obstructive renal calculus. The problem with this disease is that it causes progressive destruction of the renal parenchyma and this renders the kidney non-functional. Histopathology of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis show two important features. Those are lipid-laden foamy macrophages in a background of inflammatory cells. Lipid-laden foamy macrophages is a characteristic feature of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. However, at this point, we should know that there is another entity called as clear cell renal cell carcinoma. Histopathology of clear cell renal cell carcinoma also show lipid-laden foamy macrophages. So, in a frozen section, it is often difficult to distinguish between the two entities. This can lead to unnecessary radical nephrectomy. But there is a way to differentiate between the two entities based on certain markers. Xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis is CD68 positive, but clear cell renal cell carcinoma is CD68 negative. Xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis is vimentin and cytokeratin negative, whereas clear cell renal cell carcinoma expresses both vimentin and cytokeratin. Coming to pathogenesis of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis, there are three important factors for the pathogenesis nephrolithiasis, obstruction, and infection. The starting point is an obstructing calculus. The obstructing calculus causes stasis of urine, and because of stasis, there can be proliferation of bacteria like E. coli and Proteus. The infective process starts at the pelvic calicial system and extends to the parenchyma. When it extends to the parenchyma, it forms small abscesses. These abscesses are surrounded by sheets of macrophages called as xanthoma cells. These are interspersed with plasma cells and giant cells. The inflammatory process ultimately leads to the destruction of renal parenchyma. If we look at the gross specimens, we can understand the disease process a little better. In the first specimen, we can see the dilated collecting system. Dilated collecting system is caused by an obstructing calculus. We can also see that renal pyramids and renal parenchyma are replaced by yellow nodular masses. The disease process may not be limited to just the kidney. It can extend beyond the kidney as well. In the second picture, we can see a nodular lesion in the perirenal fat. If the disease process extends further, it can affect the surrounding organs too. In the third photograph, we can see that the disease process has involved the adjacent colon. Coming to clinical features of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. Xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis can be suspected in a patient if they have the following features. History of urinary tract infections which are often recurrent along with a unilaterally enlarged non-functioning kidney with a mass lesion which can't be distinguished from carcinoma. As the kidney enlarges, it can cause a capsular stretch. This causes flank pain. In these patients, Bacteria like E. coli or Proteus are persistent and don't get eliminated easily. So they cause recurrent urinary tract infections which can give rise to fever with chills. Some of them also escape into the urinary bladder and can give persistent bacteriuria. As xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis is an infective process, there is some kind of inflammatory response that the body mounts against this disease. This leads to release of lot of inflammatory markers. This can lead to malaise. Sometimes the kidney can get massive 
and on physical examination presents as palpable mass. As discussed before, patients often have a history of pre-existing renal calculi. Peculiarly, this commonly affects one-sided kidney only. In other words, xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis can be considered as an unilateral condition. Xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis is common in diabetics and most commonly affects women of 5th to 7th decades. The next question is, what do you think is the most common bacteria associated with xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis? The answer is proteus species. However, E. coli is also common. So for these patients with suspected xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis, we are going to do two kinds of urine tests, urine routine and microscopy and urine culture and sensitivity. Urine routine and microscopy show pus cells and protein. Urine culture sensitivity usually show growth of proteus or E. coli species. However, it is not necessary that culture and sensitivity has to come positive. Many patients come with a history of antibiotic intake and in these cases urine culture and sensitivity may come out as negative. Xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis is almost always unilateral therefore azotemia or frank renal failure is uncommon as the opposite kidney is functioning pretty well. Apart from urine tests and other blood investigations, imaging is also important. Out of all imaging investigations, CT scan is the most useful one. Before we see actual CT plates, it is important that we understand what all we need to look at in a CT film. This we can achieve with the help of a cartoon. If we take a look at the pelvic calicial system, we can see that they are dilated. It is called as pelvic calyctesis. An obstructive calculus can often be seen in a pelvic calicial system. If we look at the renal parenchyma, we can often see hypoattenuating areas. These areas actually represent areas of small abscesses. Because of the active inflammatory process going on, perinephric fat stranding can be appreciated. As there is tendency for the infective process to go outside the kidneys, they can affect the abdominal wall too and cause abdominal wall abscess. With these points in mind, we can go ahead and look at few CT plates suggestive of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis. The first plate that we are going to see is the axial cut of CCT abdomen and pelvis of a 65-year-old female who presented with pyuria, fever and right flank pain. In the first plate, we can see a central stone in the renal pelvis. The central stone is surrounded by a low attenuating lesion found in the cortex. We can also see the infective process has spread from the perirenal space into the surrounding abdominal wall. Moving on to the second axial cut CT plate, we can clearly see the perirenal fat stranding. This is suggestive of local perirenal inflammation. There is also evidence of multiple low attenuation necrotic material. These correspond to debris filled calysis and xanthoma. The third image is suggestive of staghorn calculus in the collecting system of left kidney. There is also a collection in the left retroperitoneum, the psoas muscle and posterior abdominal wall musculature. To prove non-functioning of the affected kidney, Technetium 99 DMSS scan may need to be performed. In a Technetium 99 DMSS scan, the affected area of kidney show reduced pressure uptake. Here, we can see a Technetium 99 DMSS scan of kidney showing moth-eaten appearance of upper pole of right kidney in a patient affected with segmental xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis of right kidney. Management of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis will now be easy to understand as we understand various aspects of this disease. Most important problem affecting the treatment of xanthogranulomatous pyelonephritis is incorrect diagnosis. However, with the help of CT scan, 90% of times this condition can be diagnosed preoperatively. Preoperative antibiotic therapy needs to be given to the patient to stabilize the patient. 
वी हैव स्टडीड प्रीवियसली दैट जैंथोक्रैनोमैटस पाइलोनेफ्राइटिस ऑन हिस्टोपैथोलॉजी कंटेन लाइपिड लेडन माइक्रोफेजेस दिस कंडीशन कैन देयर फोर बी डिफिकल्ट टू डिस्टिंग्विश फ्रॉम क्लियर सेल रीनल सेल कार्सिनोमा सो प्री ऑपरेटिवली इफ मेलेग्नेंट ट्यूमर ऑफ किडनी कैन नॉट बी एक्सक्लूडेड देन पेशेंट मस्ट अंडर गो नेफ्रेक्टमी अनदर फैक्टर दैट वी नीड टू कंसिडर इज दैट देर आर इंस्टेंसेज बट पेशेंट मे हैव अ फोकाई ऑफ जैंथो ग्रैंडोमैटस पाइलोनेफ्राइटिस अलॉन्ग विथ अनदर फोकाई ऑफ क्लियर सेल रीनल सेल कार्सिनोमा पैपिलरी ट्रांजिशनल सेल कार्सिनोमा एंड स्कॉमस सेल कार्सिनोमा ऑफ रीनल पेलविस एन इम्पॉर्टेंट प्रिंसिपल ऑफ ट्रीटमेंट ऑफ जैंथो ग्रैंडोमैटस पाइलोनेफ्राइटिस इज दैट वी मस्ट टेक आउट द एंटायर मास This is because it is an infective mass, and if we leave anything behind, then it might lead to reinfection. The surgery can be done laparoscopically. However, as the mass is very large, there is a high chance that this might get converted into an open nephrectomy. We must never do an incision and drainage for the above condition, as it can lead to nephrocutaneous fistula, which is very difficult to manage. Thank you so much for watching the video. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe my channel.